Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Autodesk Virtual Academy for today. Uh, I'm a little lonely today, but uh, I'm Nigel Mbayek here from Kativ. I'm an application engineer and the host for pretty much all of these AVAs. Uh, coincidentally, today I'm actually presenting for you all. Um, and as you can see on the screen, and as you know, most of you saw in the reminder emails, we're going to be going over some of the keys to make sure that you successfully implement your vault upgrades, right? So uh, there is a big stigma that, hey, like, you know, my data is the most important part of my company, and I want to take as few risks as possible and make sure I'm following the right procedures in regards to maintaining that IP and making sure that, you know, nothing bad happens to it. Um, and part of that is your vault upgrades, right? Every year when the uh, Autodesk releases a new version, generally they add functionality, um, and it is a good idea to go from one version to the next, right? They get rid of things like, uh, they implement things like bug fixes, they implement new technology. Uh, for example, in 2018, uh, Vault Professional, they added the new PDF publish tool, um, which is really awesome. Um, and they've added, you know, some new security features as well. Those are things you wanna be able to take advantage of, um, and part of being able to do that is migrating your data to that next version, right? Um, same thing with your CAD tools. Uh, if you want to move CAD tools forward, you're going to maybe move your data management forward as well. So in this case, you need to move your vault uh, into that next version. Uh, it's a question that we get a lot here at Kativ. Um, it's something that we're really well versed at. Um, we have a couple of people dedicated to just vault support and uh, implementing things uh, like vault care, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, so definitely stay tuned. Uh, I want to keep this as you know communal as possible. So if you have any things to add um, or any questions at all during this process, I know a lot of people on the call right now are well versed in doing this themselves. Um, so definitely if you do have anything to add, let me know um, and uh, in the questions and I'll definitely address that. Uh, you know, you might be getting to something a little bit faster than me. So uh, let's uh, let's move along here. So uh, first off, let's go ahead and jump through here. So our goal through today is to go over the Kativ checklist for general vault upgrades. So uh, I spoke to one of my colleagues here, Jose, um, and Jose performs a lot of what we call vault care, which includes those yearly vault upgrades. Um, and so I'm like, hey, Jose, do you have any documentation in regards to how you approach these things, you know, a more formal way to do things? Um, as opposed to myself, who just like remembers things. Um, he actually has a formal checklist. He passed that on to me, and I'm gonna go ahead and pass that on to you. Um, super valuable. It definitely uh, helped me keep everything organized and ensure that I'm doing everything in the right order. Um, we also wanna end that fear of the vault upgrade process. Um, it is a big undertaking, uh, especially if you have uh, you know, a very custom vault, things like multi-site replication, you've got custom databases, uh, you know, you've got uh, multiple migrations, right? Say for example, you're going from something like a 2013 to a 2018, that's a really big leap. And there's a couple of caveats to be able to keep in mind when you're doing something like that. Uh, so definitely we wanna end that fear of the vault upgrade process. We wanna let you all know that Kativ is here um, to be able to help with that as well. So if you do have any questions, you want some guidance in regards to how to approach these things, um, we'll definitely you know, ask us and we'll definitely give that to you. Um, we're not gonna keep those a secret from anybody. Um, and then as an aside for that, if, if this is something you wanna pass on to somebody else, um, we do have our team of dedicated experts who are on site almost uh, their entire weeks here at Kativ doing things like vault upgrades, training, et cetera, for people. So we definitely do have that expertise um, and can do it for you if you've got you know more complicated setup. So let's start with that checklist. There's a couple of things here. I'm gonna go over them one at a time and I'm gonna kind of show everyone where these things lie on the particular machines. Um, just the aside here, um, for a lot of these uh, features, you're gonna need um, admin access to your vault. So uh, if you don't have that, definitely find someone who does, generally the IT person or the CAD manager at the company um, who is uh, managing all of this vault stuff. You probably need um, their clearance to be able to get to things like the vault server itself. So first off is that vault maintenance, right? So defragmentation, um, vault backups, re-indexing of the vault, among other things. This is something that we like to do uh, on a monthly, if not a quarterly basis, excuse me, as part of our vault care program, we make sure that all of these things are defragged, backed up. Um, that's really key, right? You don't want to be, uh, you don't want to have no backup. Um, that's a double negative. Holy, holy moly there. Anyways, uh, you want to ensure that you have a backup because if something goes wrong, you know, God forbid, you want to be able to have something available to you so that you can get back and lose as little work as possible. Um, it's not uncommon that I, 
you know, look into to new customer or to new vaults um, for prospective customers and see sometimes that they haven't been backed up in something like 90, 100 days. Losing 100 days of engineering data is no joke. Um, that's something you don't want to go through. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to ensure that these things are happening. Not necessarily part of the upgrade process, but just something to keep in mind to, to keep doing um, as during the year, you know, even if you're, uh, you're not upgrading at that particular time. So I'm just going to alt tab out of here and jump into my ADMS. So if you don't know how to get to this, this is the Autodesk Data Management Server Console. This is the vault um, portion that's on your server. So uh, my actual setup on my machine is my computer is my server and my computer is my client. Um, that's just so I can do demonstrations and whatnot like I am today. Um, if you want to find out how to get to here, um, get on your server machine, uh, whether it's VPN or if it's a physical machine, things like that um, for an RDP. Um, and then just in the in the search, uh, the start menu, you can just type typing server, right? Generally, I just type server and it brings it up, right? It's at Autodesk Data Management Server Console. Note that these are uh, specific to years, um, minus 2018, because that's what version my vault is. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. It's going to ask you to log in generally with the administrator. Um, I've already done that, so I'm already in my vault. So the first thing we want to look at is uh, general maintenance. So your defragmentation, um, as well as your re-indexing. And you're going to want to do that for each vault that you have, if you have more than one. In this case, I have two. Um, and you can check a couple of things on this uh, this homepage here, right? So if you just click at the top here, this is the My Machine. It's going to be the server name, generally, for people. You can check the number of days since the last server console backup. I like to check this every once in a while. If I have my vault scheduled to backup uh, weekly, I want to make sure this number is less than seven. Um, if it does go higher than that, you know that, hey, maybe my vault uh, backup didn't run. Uh, maybe my script wasn't running properly, things like that. Um, incremental backups, we'll just go over this real quick. Incremental backups are backups that happen um, in between backups. So say some people have fairly large vaults. I've seen vaults over a terabyte. Um, that's not, not something you can back up on a daily basis. Drives just aren't fast enough. Um, so these incremental backups do these uh, minute changes, right, during the week. Uh, generally, we see these happening Monday through Thursday. And then Friday night, you do a full backup over the weekend. Um, so they do the daily changes in your vault, not necessarily the full backup. Vaults, I have two of them. Generally, it's going to say one for most people. Um, libraries, this is if you have custom libraries or just any libraries right in your vault. I actually have none. This will tell me how big all of my SQL databases is. Um, of my vaults, and then um, it'll tell me the total size of the file store. Uh, that's just some stuff to note while we're going over this. So my main vault is uh, Tahiti here with the dots. Um, if you know that reference, uh, that's awesome. So anyways, uh, it's a wonderful place. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click. Uh, let me dismiss this. There are a couple of ways to do your defragmentation and your, uh, your re-indexing, right? The first way to do that is to go ahead to your vault. Um, and go ahead and right click, right? You have the ability to don't detach or delete that vault. That's not something you're going to want to do. But you can re index those file properties. If you're seeing some, uh, some performance slowdown in your vault, this is something you're going to want to do. Generally, uh, I do this about once a quarter on my vault. Um, my vault's pretty small. Um, but if you are seeing some performance issues, um, some slowdown, it is a good idea to go ahead and re index those file properties. Um, oftentimes, we see a pretty drastic increase in uh, performance through there. So you can just click that to re-index the file properties. You can also defrag the database. Um, as noted here, uh, once you click into this vault, you get this uh, this menu here that gives you specifics about that vault, right? Number of files in the store. This is really big um, for people who want to know, like, oh, how many engineering files do I actually have in my vault? This is where you find that information. Um, you can find out where the file store is on your C drive. And then uh, the database fragmentation here at the bottom, it says defragmentation not recommended. I actually did a re defrag a couple days ago, um, so it's not asking for this. If you actually look at my other vault, it's going to tell me that there's a defragmentation recommended. I'm actually having defrag this in some quite some time. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you know you want to uh, ensure that you're defragging your vault every once in a while. Just make sure your performance is up to snuff um, and things like that. You can do a bunch of command line uh, scripts as well to make sure that you're automating these things. You can kind of tie them to that task scheduler. I tend to do that a lot. Um, when we look into vaults, uh, we do our upgrades and then we automate those backups. Um, usually at the end of a backup, we'll automatically do a defrag. So it's doing that like once a week or something. You don't necessarily have to click that button all the time, right? So that's the right click and then a defragment database. So the other thing in regards to vault maintenance you wanna make sure that you have is that backup. Um, if you 
want to be able to manually do a backup, it's under uh, tools on the AMS, backup and restore. Um, essentially gives you this, uh, this window and you're able to uh, do a backup of your vault or you can restore to a previous backup. Say for example, you had a, um, you had something go wrong with your vault, you reinstalled and you wanted to restore to a backup from say last week. This is where you do that. Um, you just go through here, click next, choose your backup path. Um, you can validate those backup files, make sure you've got everything. Uh, and then you can do, uh, you can back up those standard content center libraries. Generally, um, I don't do this. And then ignore non-replicated files. Uh, it is as it sounds. Once you do this, it runs through that whole backup process. You can view the results. Um, and you can also look at things like the console log to be able to uh, to look at those uh, those backup logs, right? So it's telling me, hey, at 11.15 a.m. a couple of weeks ago, I did a backup. Um, it validated the file store, and then it backed up all of the databases. Let me back this up. So let me go ahead and look at uh, where my backup is located. Something really good to note. I'm just going to jump on this page here and just note that, hey, like my, my vault's about 300-ish uh, megabytes. That's something I want to keep in mind. So I actually did a backup of my vault to my uh, to my desktop, something that's probably not recommended. I put it there so I could find it pretty easily later. You want to do your vault backups to a drive that's local to that computer. If you do a, a vault backup to a network drive, um, oftentimes you run into errors, things like security. Um, if you don't do things like RoboCopy, you get very um, complex and sometimes your vault backups fail. You want to make sure that you're um, doing your vault backups to the local machine, whether it's a C drive or a secondary drive on that computer. Um, those are things we want to be able to do. Uh, also note, when we're talking about backups here, um, an image of your server, so like uh, say for example, you, your IT department does full blown freezes of your server um, to get a snapshot of it at some point in time. Sometimes that's not enough to back up a vault. You want to make sure you're doing that backup from the ADMS to ensure that you have all of your data. Um, I can't stress that enough. Sometimes it's uh, people think that doing a, a backup of the full server is enough to capture the whole vault. Sometimes it's not um, because things are time sensitive in the vault. Uh, so you're going to want to do vault backups on a regular basis. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this vault backup. Um, as you can see, there's some folders in here for the databases and the file store. Tells me what those contents are and the history of that. Um, but if you go ahead and just right click properties here, it'll tell me how big this is. Um, it's about 300 megabytes. That makes sense. I didn't back up some of the libraries. Um, so it's going to be a little bit smaller. But generally, um, say your vault is 100 gigabytes total, um, this folder is going to be about 100 gigabytes. If it's drastically different than that, um, you got an issue. Um, something either didn't carry over. Uh, or maybe something went wrong during that process. That's when you're going to want to look into those logs. Um, make sure that you know you want to validate that that backup um, and the file store before you move on to things like migrating your vault. Cool. Let me go see if I have any uh, any questions about this particular portion before I move forward into the next section. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to answer some of these questions for you in a bit, Radu. I'm just moving forward through the rest of the presentation here. So let me go ahead and jump in here. Cool, so after that, before you even start your upgrade process, while you're thinking about, you know, I'm gonna do my upgrade four or five weeks from now, maybe a couple months out the road, you wanna be able to check your server requirements. You wanna be able to know that you have the hardware to support the version of Vault that you're going to. Um, that's really important. Sometimes uh, we forget, you know, sometimes uh, operating systems and things like SQL aren't compatible with the version that we wanna go to. Uh, once you do that upgrade, it starts creating some headaches. Uh, we want to make sure to avoid all of that, as, as much of that as possible. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Um, let's check server requirements. Generally, I get this question a lot. What are the server requirements for my vault or the system requirements for my clients? Um, our good friend Google has the answer. So if you just uh, type vault system requirements, um, you can type uh, whatever version you have. Generally, uh, I just type this and I find the versions from within here. Uh, I'm just going to type 2018. And uh, keep in note, you want to be able to go to any uh, any URL that starts with knowledge.autodesk. Um, essentially, Autodesk keeps track of all of these URLs. They make sure all of the, uh, the data is um, very accurate. Sometimes some of the data on the knowledge network is created by users like yourself and me. You know, they, they do monitor that. This is the, the source of truth that I definitely go through. So it's going to give me system requirements for Vault uh, 2018 products, 
And we're going to go ahead and take a look at these server requirements. You do have your supported OSs. You do have your supported databases. Um, and then you've got things like replication. And then you've got your full-blown hardware requirements for Vault. Um, so people always ask, hey, do I need like a supercomputer to host my Vault? Um, not necessarily. Um, but all of that information is here, right? So there's recommended uh, recommended specifications, right? When you're looking at hard disk, just note um, for the server requirements, uh, you probably want to go bigger than this, um, just based on the size of your actual data, right? If your Vault file store is going to be over 200 gigs, you're going to want over 200 gigs of uh, space on your Vault server, so you can ho house those backups, right? Let's see here. We've got a couple of questions that came through. Let me just make sure uh, we're looking at that. Yeah, so I got a couple of questions in regards to um, SQL Server 2017. Um, generally, they move the SQL Server up um, every couple of releases. Um, so as you can see for 2018, uh, 2016 has become a supported SQL uh, Server version. Um, I don't know what the next version is going to house, but I'd imagine um, by the time 2019 and 2020 Vault come out, SQL Server 2017 will probably be available for those versions. I don't, um, I don't anticipate uh, you be able, you being able to install um, your Vault with SQL Server 2017 if you're going to Vault 2018. I don't think these system requirements are ever going to change um, to support new OSs, if that's the question that you're asking. So you're going to want to make sure that you go over these system requirements. And then you're also going to want to be looking over a couple of other things, right? So uh, there is the Vault clients. So, and these are the actual client machines here. People who are using CAD, maybe they're using Vault Office, not necessarily using CAD. Um, if you want to look over those system requirements, um, those are here as well. Generally, you're going to want to go with the CAD tool requirements as opposed to the Vault client requirements because the CAD tool requirements are generally a little bit higher um, than the Vault client. Uh, so definitely want to cover all bases there. So uh, definitely look into things like the Inventor requirements. If you're using Inventor, um, AutoCAD, maybe Mechanical and Electrical, you're going to want to look at those as well just to make sure you're covering all your bases. And let's keep moving along here. Obtain a valid backup. This is probably the most key um, thing in regards to doing a Vault migration, is you want to make sure that you don't lose your data. And it's, it's not funny at all. It's serious. You, that's the last thing you want to do. And you want to make sure that you got that backup, you have that vac backup, you validated it, it's on the right, you know, it's recent. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can look at the, the, the logs. Um, sometimes we have people who do their backups via a batch file. Uh, um, and then you can look into things like the uh, the task scheduler. And a lot of the vaults, I think almost all of the vaults that Kativ implements, um, we generate a batch file that automatically runs that backup for you. Um, and you want to make sure that that's happening and not failing. Um, generally, it's down here. It's called vault. I don't actually don't have it on this computer. Usually, it says vault backup, the ones that we create. Um, and you want to just make sure that task is running. Um, a caveat to that is uh, once you do implement that vault, and uh, we set that up. Sometimes we have IT departments who change the Kativ or administrator password to the vault. Um, it's not a big deal, uh, but you want to ensure that uh, if you are going to change the admin password or the Kativ password to your vault, that you let us know so that we can go ahead and go into that batch file and edit the, uh, the, the credentials on that batch file so that it does allow you into the vault to run that backup. Um, we see that a lot. We, uh, you know, I, I, Jorge's told me the story a million times. He would do a vault upgrade one year. He would go there um, the next year to do the upgrade to the newest version and see that the vault hasn't been backed up in like 365 days. Um, and that's because someone in IT decided to change the password um, and uh, our backup script stopped working. Um, and so that's something we want to try to avoid as much as possible. Just make sure that those things are happening. Download and install the server software. Most of the people who are on this call um, from the list that I see here are uh, are the CAD managers or the vault uh, the vault managers at your respective uh, organizations. You do have so you do have access to the uh, the Autodesk account portal where you're going to uh, download and install this software. Um, you can also check um, for Vault dot updates. So uh, traditionally, we've heard of things like service packs for Vault. The new formal name for that is going to be a dot update. Um, so uh, for example, you're going to hear of things like Vault 2017 or Vault 2018.1, Vault 2018.2. 
Um, instead of service pack one and service pack two, they're using this naming scheme with the dots um, to tell you what order it's in, right? So if you see a 2018.1.1, that means it's vault 2018, uh, the first dot update, and then the first hotfix to that particular update, and so on and so forth. That that scheme, that numbering scheme keeps going over. After you download the vault, uh, the vault server software, um, you're going to want to look at one of two things, right? So there are two options in regards to doing your uh, your vault uh, upgrade, right? So there's what we call what we call an in-place upgrade, which means you're going to be using the same exact server um, to do your upgrade or you're going to do a server migration, right? So say, for example, your OS is a little bit old and you're going to want to go to a brand new server to put your vault. There's two different ways to do this. Um, so the in-place upgrade, if you're not doing anything to SQL, you're not doing anything to the operating system, you're just going to um, you know, install and migrate your vault. All you do is you install that vault software. And then once uh, you install that software, um, it'll uninstall your previous one and then uh, inform you that, hey, there's a database on this computer. Do you want to migrate that to this vault? You hit yes, and it does it for you. The second one, where you're doing a server migration, and this is becoming more and more prominent as of lately, um, as people have started moving from uh, server 2008 to 2012 um, and so forth, is uh, a full-blown server migration. The way you do that is you uh, you take a backup of your vault, you know you get that you obtain that valid backup, and then what you do is you move this to the other machine um, that you're going to do your migration on. So you're going to install the vault software on that new machine, and then you're going to go ahead and do a restore of that backup. And so that's where we came came to this uh, this tools backup and restore tab. You're going to want to restore your vault to that backup um, from the other machine. Uh, note that your clients, if the server name is different, are going to be pointed to that old vault still. So you're going to want to go ahead and change what vault um, those clients are looking towards. And you can do that when you log into vault. There's a couple of drop downs. Just change the server name, um, and then they should be able to find that vault. Looks like we have a couple of questions here. Let me go ahead and address a few of these as we're going um, so I don't have like 50 questions at the end of this, right? Uh, a couple questions. Is Windows 2016 supported with Vault 2018? Uh, Vault 2018 does support um, Windows Server 2016 Essential, Standard, and Data Center. Uh, if you do look up the Vault system requirements, like I just showed a couple of minutes ago, um, those specifics will be there. And then another question. Will a Vault 2017 Vault clients connect to the Vault server? Um, yeah, you're good to go. Um, you can have clients that are older than your server by a year or two. Uh, and be able to connect that way. The other way doesn't work though. If you've got 2018 CAD tools, you cannot connect to a 2017 vault. Um, that won't work. So keep that in mind. All right, let me keep moving on through here. Um, I guess the next one, right, is update your clients and your CAD tools. Like I said, you're gonna every time you upgrade your vault, you're gonna want to upgrade your clients um, and that um, and those CAD tools to be able to match that version. Um, like I mentioned, you can go uh, back one. Um, not a big deal. Uh, but you don't want to be back like four or five versions. It's just completely incompatible. So there's a couple of caveats to this, right? We went over a general upgrade checklist for 90% of vaults. Um, I want to say that there are a fair number of vaults, especially on for these larger uh, organizations that we work with, where you do have uh, things like your custom, uh, your custom content centers that you need to migrate over. That's going to add some complexity to this. Multi-site replication is going to add some complexity to this as well. Um, I think I actually have a slide for all of this if I move forward. I do. There's a couple of caveats. Migrating custom content centers. This needs to happen through Inventor. Um, if you need some more information on this, let me know, um, and I can get you in touch with somebody who can help you through this process. Um, upgrades greater than two versions. This has been happening a lot lately when we've gotten people off of things like 2012 Vault to 2018. When you do your migrations, you do not want to jump further than two um, at a time. So for the example here, um, if you want to go from Vault 2014 to Vault 2017, you're going to want to first jump two versions, 2014 to 2016, and then 2016 to 2017. Um, you can also conversely go from 14 to 15 and then 15 to 17. That's fine as well. But you also want to make sure that during this migration process, you're hitting the system requirements for those intermediate versions as well. So you might need to do like one and a half OS upgrades 
um, just keep that in mind when you're doing things like this. Also, if you're um, reinstalling an OS when doing your vault upgrade, this is key, right? You might want to write this down. If you're upgrading your OS when you're doing a vault upgrade, what you want to do is you want to uninstall it all, then do, you want to uninstall everything, do your OS upgrade, then install vault, then do your vault restore. Um, you don't want to do the upgrade in place um, while everything's working. You're going to run into some SQL issues. Um, if you have questions about that specifically, let us know. Um, we've seen a lot of it. Uh, there's a couple people here who've pretty much seen it all. Someone like a Mike Carlson will be able to help you with that. Um, replicated configurations. Um, you're going to want to do the main site first. So you upgrade the main, and then you do any of those secondary replicated sites um, after that. That's something to note. And there's a lot more. So if you have any questions on whether or not you've got a special use case here, um, maybe you've got like something super custom about your vault, leveraging some of the API, doing some fancy stuff, let us know. Um, that might add some complexity to your vault upgrades. Uh, and you don't want to. Uh, put your data at risk at all. Uh, we have a lot of uh, experience doing some of these special upgrades and we can definitely give you the guidance um, or help you through that process. All right, let's keep moving. Um, actually, there's something I forgot to show. Um, let me jump back here. Um, within regards to the system requirements, there are a couple of things to look at as well. Um, and that's your SQL version, right? If you don't know how to find that, um, or you don't know what version you're on to be able to check if you've met those system requirements for the next version, you can do so in the uh, SQL uh, Server Manager, I believe it's, it's called, um, in the Start menu, type SQL, um, the SQL Server Configuration Manager. I've already opened it. It's this toolbox icon here. And this is that homepage for it, for your SQL services. This will give you all of the SQL servers that you're using. I'm gonna go ahead and right click this. This is a SQL server for Autodesk Vault. Um, regardless of what your vault is named, uh, this will be the same. Go ahead and right click this and go into properties. Once you're in properties, you're gonna wanna go to the advanced tab. I'm gonna go here pretty slowly. So if you, if you wanna write this down, you can. Um, note that this is gonna be on YouTube later so you can watch this there. Uh, the advanced tab, and then I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. It's gonna tell me uh, a couple of things. So the third to last line is stock keeping unit name. That is whether or not you have full SQL, you've got SQL Express, or you have some trial version of SQL. Um, as noted here, I've got SQL Express that comes with the Vault installer. Um, if your Vault is large and you've got a, uh, a SQL database, um, traditionally it was like more than 10 gigs. You're gonna wanna go with a full blown SQL. Um, you also need it for a couple of other things like replication. Uh, as well. And then you can go to your, look at your version, right? So this is the build number for SQL 11.3.6020.0. Um, and that'll tell you exactly what it is. So SQL 2014, SQL 2012, et cetera, et cetera. What I generally do is I copy this 11.3.6020.0. Um, and then I go to my good old friend, Google. And uh, I type SQL build numbers. Um, and this first one, it's like a, it's a WordPress um, blog. And a couple people here have actually printed this. Um, it's really important. So uh, generally the first one is the, the, the version and then it goes into uh, which service pack it is. So uh, version 11 is actually SQL Server 2012, which is what I have. And then you just follow this um, to figure out exactly what version you have. Um, sometimes they're a little bit different because there are multiple versions of, uh, of service packs, um, whether or not you have full or express, and you can find some of that um, within here, and there's a couple of other ones as well. If you look at SQL Server Builds.blogspot, this is actually the one I like to use um, because when it's colored and it gives you the differences between full and sometimes it does express as well because those numbers can be different. So this is the one I have, um, or actually this is the first one I have. So just keep in mind, uh, this is something that uh, you're gonna wanna take a look at, make sure your SQL Server um, version is compatible with the version of Vault that you're going to. So here's something really important too. I'm gonna I'll post this link in the uh, in the chat um, a little bit later. Let me get to this um, once I go through the rest of this PowerPoint. Sorry, I'm all over the place today. Um, there are a couple things to take care of as well. Cool.
So here's some useful links in regards to some of your backups. Let me go ahead and jump through here. If you haven't installed uh, Vault yet, if you're just here for some information about how the whole process works and you want to install it yourself and do an implementation, there is a self-installation kit from Kativ. Um, you can go ahead and click through here. And essentially, it brings you to our website. There's a series of videos um, where we help people do you know, Vault Basic DIYs. Um, if you want to tackle the process yourself, you're more than welcome to. We have data sets here available as well. It's uh, seven videos or six videos um, to go through to be able to run through that process. Um, we have had a lot of customers who have had success going through here. Um, sometimes it takes a while. But if you do have that time, uh, definitely uh, give it a shot yourself. And if you run into any issues um, or you just want us to do it, uh, we can do that for you as well. Useful link. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this in the chat for people who want this link. Um, Eric, if you could also double this link to uh, anyone on the other streams, that would be awesome. So that's our base uh, Vault Basic self-installation kit. Note if you want Vault Pro or Vault Workgroup, that's a little bit different. This doesn't have things like those, those ECOs um, and those that revision control um, because it is Vault Basic. Let's jump back into the PowerPoint. Vault tips. So a couple of months ago, Javier Chavez, one of our, uh, our post-sales engineers here, uh, who's probably had some of the most, if not second most, Vault uh, experience on our team, probably after Mike, um, he did a full-blown webinar on just a couple of cool tips for your vault, right? To, to sometimes reduce clicks, to customize things like your thin client to your liking, doing things like the um, the uh, the batch file backups. Uh, sorry, I couldn't find that word for a second. If you want to look into the scripting for batch file backups, um, go ahead and take a look at this as well. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, Put this link into the chat so that everyone, whoops, so that everyone can see that as well. And then I'm gonna go through here and do these other two. One and two. Great. So I'm not gonna play this video. Uh, let me put this link in here as well. If you want some more vault tips, definitely take a look at this video. And then lastly, um, there is a vault maintenance uh, workshop that we held here at Kativ Technologies. Um, Actually, I noticed some of the people in the attendee list are actually attendees of that workshop. Um, so if you want to watch that again, or you just want some tips in regards to vault maintenance, right? So those things that I went over initially, um, these things, the defragmentation, the backup, the reindexing, and stuff like that, we go through how to do those step-by-step, -step, things like that within that actual uh, workshop. So I'm going to go ahead and put this link in there as well. So like I mentioned, Eric, Paul, if you could go ahead and uh, forward these to everyone on the other streams as well, that would be great. And then lastly, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, about actual Kativ Lifeline with Vault Care. Um, and I see there are some Lifeline with Vault Care customers on the call right now. We do have a ton of experience with Vault. Um, it is probably, if I were to say, it is our bread and butter. That is one thing that we pride ourselves upon being, you know, some of the... Uh, some of the, if not the, uh, leaders among Autodesk resellers of uh, Vault experience, right? We have a lot of people who have been around since Vault was created um, and have a lot of experience, you know, going through all of the versions, being able to do um, very custom things in regards to Vault when you're looking at things like ECOs, life cycles, bill material, ERP integration, and beyond that, right? So what Kativ Lifeline with Vault Care is, you've probably heard what Lifeline is. That's our general... Um, Kativ support, right? Um, that's what we offer our customers. Uh, you can call in unlimited, um, ask technical questions if you're running into uh, crashes in your software, which unfortunately sometimes everyone does see. Uh, things like installation and activation, we, we help with that as well. Um, but we do have a process on top of that, which is called Lifeline with Vault Care. Um, and it is as it sounds. It is us caring for your vault. Um, so sometimes people don't necessarily have a, a dedicated IT department um, or a dedicated person to look at your vault. Um, it is the most important thing to your business, your data. You don't want to lose that. You want to make sure that you're taking the utmost precaution into ensuring that you do have that, right? Because it is the probably, like I said, the most valuable thing to your business um, is your IP. And we want to make sure that you know you keep that safe. So what we do is we have a team that does quarterly vault maintenance. Um, essentially, we remote into your servers. 
uh, and then do things like the SQL maintenance, which I didn't go over today. That's a completely another topic in itself. We go over the defragmentation or, or if we've you know scripted that, we make sure that it's happening. Um, we go over re-indexing your vault, uh, ensuring that your backup process is happening properly and you're, you know, Sometimes your vault gets too big and your backup actually doesn't fit on your uh, on your hard drive anymore. I actually saw that a couple of days ago. Um, and so we keep track of these kinds of things, right? We, we make sure that you're in the best place um, and you don't run into uh, any hiccups moving forward into that. It also includes yearly upgrades, right? So someone from Kativ is going to do your upgrade for you. Um, generally, that person's Jose or Mike or someone else on that team. Um, as well. So maybe you've heard uh, from those people. I see that we have a couple of vault care customers on the line right now. Um, we'll do, do yearly upgrades for you. So if you want to get to that latest and greatest version, you don't have to worry about all these things that I went over. We'll, we'll worry about that for you. Um, this even uh, includes things like when you when you have more complex vaults, uh, multi-site replication, you've got multiple vaults on one site, you know, you're doing multiple uh, version jumps. Uh, we'll take care of that stuff for you uh, with with Vault Care, and then it includes Kativ Lifeline support, which is like I mentioned, our support hotline here. Uh, you can contact unlimitedly um, via phone or uh, or email. If you want to know more about uh, Lifeline with Vault Care, definitely let me know in the survey. I could pass that information on to your sales representative, or just contact your sales representative um, or someone here at Kativ if you'd like more information. Um, if you want to be able to leverage something like this. A lot of people already have Lifeline. Why not add Vault Care to the end of that as well? Cool. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Q&A. Um, there are a lot of questions. Um, I'm certain, I'm not even going to look at the questions yet. I'm certain a lot of these are specific to people's vaults. Um, so if I don't answer your question, don't fret. I'll make sure that somebody follows up with you. Um, I'm assuming a lot of these questions are going to be very specific to certain customers and their specific setups. So if I don't get to your question, it might be because it is super specific um, and I'll definitely catch up with you offline. Let's take a look at some of these questions here. Um, Radu, how's it going? Uh, I know you guys are uh, looking at your vault upgrade in a couple of weeks here. Um, so how do I transfer slash copy folders from one vault to another vault? Um, it really depends on what kind of data you need. Uh, if you need uh, things like revisions and stuff, um, that, that's something we can take offline. If you just want to put the files in, um, generally the easiest way to do that is to just upload those into the other vault via things like the auto loader. Um, I can follow up with you offline for that particular question. And then secondly, um, how do I archive a folder from my vault before deleting it? Um, I, need to I might need to restore it later. Um, generally, I suggest not deleting that folder in the first place if you need to restore it later. Um, We'll, we'll talk offline about that too as well. I have a couple of things um, for that as well. Uh, someone looks like someone raised their hand in the uh, in the GoToWebinar. Definitely just type your question in. Uh, let me see who that was. Type your question in and we'll be able to address that uh, moving forward. Uh, Vincent, uh, if you have a question, definitely go ahead and type it into the questions panel and we'll answer that for you. I've got a question here. Um, what are the chances that the Vault SQL database will get mixed up slash corrupted slash confused? Um, with other Autodesk SQL databases. Uh, so generally, if you're looking at Autodesk SQL databases, they all play pretty friendly with each other. Um, you're not, you shouldn't run into any issues um, with things like Advanced Steel. I know Plant also uses SQL databases as well. Um, if you are using things like Plant and Vault or Civil 3D and Vault um, or even Electrical and Vault, let us know. Um, that's another caveat in regards to Vault upgrades um, as well. Uh, some of those project files are very specific and there are a couple things you need to configure in your vault before you implement it. So that's just another uh, caveat there. I keep trying to use my mouse and uh, I keep forgetting that uh, it has no battery. Just some questions about operating system compatibility. Um, like I mentioned, if you want to know about operat operating system um, compatibility with vault, go ahead and Google that. Um, the system requirements for the version of Vault that you want to go to, and it'll tell you whether or not that Microsoft uh, server OS is compatible with your Vault. Also note that the uh, there are three flavors of Vault, right? There's basic, there's work group, and professional. Um, generally, there is no difference between the three um, in regards to system requirements, but just double check anyways. Um, 
maybe something came up uh, recently that I don't know about, but generally it's uh, all exactly the same. And then it looks like Vincent here, um, how do I transfer my custom materials and appearances to the new version? Do I need to migrate it? When you've got custom inventor libraries like that, um, depending on what they are, you might need to migrate those. Um, Jose, I'm sure Jose is like jumping in his chair right now telling me that I need to. Um, let me follow up with you, but I'm almost certain that you don't form materials. If you've got custom content center libraries, then you do. And that's something you do through Inventor. And if you need to know how to do that, um, let us know. We can uh, send you some white papers for that process uh, and stuff like that. All right, it looks like some of the other questions that I have are very specific to people's vaults. Um, I will go ahead and take some of those offline. What I'll do is I'll give everyone another 30 seconds or so to, uh, to go ahead and ask any more questions that you do have and make a couple of announcements. So uh, this Friday, tomorrow, we do have uh, what's called Fusion Fridays here. So if you guys are using uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 software, um, we do have a specific webcast for those, right? It's a spinoff of AVA. Um, I like to call um, uh, spinoffs on the TV brand of uh, channels. Um, so if you just uh, kativ.com slash fusion dash Fridays, um, this will let you know what's going on. So uh, tomorrow, uh, Alex and Brian are going to going going to be going over 3D machining in Fusion 360. Um, if you have any interest in that, uh, definitely let us know. And what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into the chat so everyone can see it. If you're interested in more webcasts, we do have a lot of these. Uh, definitely take a look on our YouTube channel or sign up for, uh, for these webcasts as well. Note that your AVA subscription doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be subscribed to these webcasts, these set of webcasts as well. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and subscribe to those if you haven't already and are interested in Fusion 360 content. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be hosting a, uh, we're going to be trying something new. We're going to be hosting a series of webinars that address uh, some really common business issues um, or business hurdles that you want to be able to go over. Specifically in this case, um, is being able to meet your project deadlines. Uh, it's something that every organization has issues with. Um, and even if you don't, you want to be able to improve that process. And we have some workflows um, and some solutions to be able to um, increase I guess, uh, productivity. Uh, and we're going to be going over some of those. We're going to be showing some of those workflows and some of those products that might be able to speed up some of your processes. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for some of those webcasts that are going to be happening here in the next few weeks. I believe that starts on the 16th of this month. So two weeks from today, um, that should be starting. And I'm actually hosting the first one. So uh, that'd be great. Looks like we've got a couple of last minute questions here. I'm going to go ahead and answer these. Uh, I've got a couple of thank yous. Definitely um, thanks to all of you for being here um, today. I do understand that Vault might not be the quote unquote sexiest of products, um, but is keeping your data safe is just as important as anything else. Um, is you know If you make spaceships, it's just as cool as making spaceships to me. So uh, let's hear. Um, should or shouldn't I back up the Autodesk SQL database via a backup plugin? Um, you can back up the SQL database via a plugin if you want to, um, like a third party uh, backup tool, but definitely don't use that as your only source of backup. Um, the Vault backup is consisted of two parts. It is consisting of the database and the file store. You need both pieces of the puzzle to be able to restore your Vault. So if you just have the database and you don't have the file store, you won't be able to put that together. Um, if you just have the file store and no database, um, you're out of luck there too. Um, we've had some cases where we've tried to uh, put the puzzle back together sometimes when we've got like three quarters of one and some of another. Um, it takes a considerable amount of time and effort if it's even possible. Um, let's see here. Can you push the new series out to past Thanksgiving? AU is in two weeks. Um, so for those of you who don't know what uh, Neil's talking about, AU is Autodesk University. And uh, I actually might, I'm, I'm seeing if I can present that first one from Vegas, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, so uh, regardless of if we push it or not, I don't think we will, Neil. Um, we have a very tight schedule going into the end of the year. Uh, 
it will be on our YouTube channel. So if you want to take an hour um, to watch that, or maybe, you know, we'll find some way to live stream at AAU. That would be like ideal. Oh, I kind of want to do that next year. Uh, it'll be there. Um, Adam, definitely, if you have any more questions, let me know. I'm on that one. On another note, if you are, are going to AU um, and you have any questions, uh, let us know. We do have a couple of representatives from our organization going to AU. Um, if you want to, you know, set up a meeting or anything, definitely let me know um, and I can get that coordinated for you. If you want to meet with me, um, definitely let me know too. That'll give me an excuse to go to AU, uh, something that I really, really want to do. So uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, and uh, you won't miss that webcast. You'll be able to watch it on YouTube later. So that's a caveat to that. Eric, um, who is the man behind the technology here on the other side, I just want to make sure I don't have any other questions from the other streams. Um, a lot of people watching this right now are in the GoToWebinar um, setup. We do have this live streamed on a couple of other platforms as well. So Facebook, uh, Facebook Live. We're also doing a YouTube live stream at the same time as well as a Twitch live stream. Um, all at the same time. So uh, I just have to make sure I catch all the questions on all of the platforms. Um, so cool. Let's see here. David's asking what time will the recording be posted? So uh, right now, uh, the raw recording of this webcast will be posted pretty much immediately after this. Um, and that's the raw recording with all of my mess ups and if I coughed or whatever during all of this, that'll all be there. But a, uh, a polished one where you get rid of all of my awkward pauses and stuff like that um, should be up this afternoon. So uh, definitely keep an eye out. If you want to uh, know where that is, that's going to be youtube.com forward slash Katif Technologies. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Be part of this. I want to get this number to 4,000 by the end of the month. That's my goal. Um, so definitely, uh, if you want to help me there, uh, do that as well. So yeah, David, if you have any questions on how to reach um, any of the recordings, let me know and I'll get you to those. Uh, I think that's everything we wanted to cover today. If you have any questions about your specific vault upgrades, let me know. Um, I know a lot of people are uh, who are on the call who are actually planning their vault upgrades right now. Shout out to you, Radu. I know you're going to do that over Thanksgiving. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be able to answer those for you. And with that, uh, that is how the cookie crumbles. And uh, may the force be with you. Thanks all for being here. We'll see you next week.